This lesson will be looking at graphing linear functions using a table of values. There are three different ways to graph a linear function. One, using a table of values, which we're looking at in this lesson. Two, using x and y intercepts, which we'll look at in the next lesson. And three, using slope intercept form, which we'll look in the lesson after that. Graphing a linear function using a table. For this method, we always want to make sure the equation is solved for y. It makes it really easy. If it's not solved for y, you can still do it, but it makes it a little harder to deal with. Once you have a table of values, we're going to pick some numbers. You can pick any numbers you want. However, you generally want to pick some easy numbers to work with in the problem. So in this case, we're going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Notice in the middle of my table, I have a three-column three table. The first column is the x. The second column is actually going to be where my work is. And the last column is my y. Every point has an x and a y piece of information. So that's why the columns are set up that way. So you can see in the first one, we're going to plug in the negative 2. So wherever we see x, we plug in negative 2. So we have 2 times negative 2 plus 1. When we solve that, we get y equals negative 3. Next, plug in the negative 1. So you get 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which gives you negative 1. And we continue this process for the other values. You see 2 times 0 plus 1, 2 times 1 plus 1, 2 times 2 plus 1, which gives you 1, 3, and 5 respectively. Once we have these values, we actually want to graph these points. So what we're going to do is we're going to take negative 2, negative 3, and we're going to go over negative 2, so 1, 2, and down 3, put a point there. Next point we're going to graph is negative 1, negative 1. So we're going to go over negative 1, down negative 1, put a point there. Then 0, 1, 1, neg 1 3, and then 2, 5. Once we have all our points graphed, we can graph them as a line. So we connect the dots with the line. And that's how we graph this equation. Now we're going to look at two more equations that are very similar to this. So we can actually look for some patterns afterwards. Next equation we're going to look at is x or y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. You're going to use the exact same table of values that we had before, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And even though this one has a fraction, the steps still stay the same. You have negative 1 half times negative 2 plus 1, which in this case gives you 2. We're going to continue these values all the way down. So you have negative 1 half times negative 1, negative 1 half times 0, negative 1 half times 1, and negative 1 half times 2, all plus 1. Now, in this problem, since I chose numbers that did not automatically really work easily with 1 half, we do have fractions in our answers. But that's fine. We just have to graph it as a fractional answer on the graph. So what we're going to do is going to do the exact same thing we did in the last problem. We have negative 2, 2. So we're going to go over negative 2 and up 2, put a point. We have negative 1 and 1 and a half. So this time when we go up, we're just going to go into the middle of the box. 0, 1, 1, 1 half, and 2, 0. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did in the last one. We're actually just going to connect the dots with the line. And there is my equation for this one. Got one more we want to look at. We're going to use the exact same table of values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We're going to plug in negative 2 for each of the values. Then we're going to plug in, so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, minus 3 is negative 7. And we go all the way down the list and get all the values there as well. Now we're going to graph these points. So we have negative 2, negative 7, so... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 1, 5, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, and 2, 1. And again, we connect our dots in this one as well, or points. Alright, since we looked at each of these three graphs and we've graphed them all independently, we're going to put them all together on the same graph. And now, there's some things that we want to look at and notice about these. The first one 
is the, the black line and the red line. If you notice, these two lines are parallel. And in a future lesson, you're going to actually see how this impacts. But we want to look at this a little briefly when we're graphing it. Notice that the two in front of the axis and both those are the same. Parallel lines have identical slopes. So those two lines are going to be parallel because they're the same slope. This blue line is going down. And that's going down because it's a negative slope, where the other two are positive slopes and they're both going up. So those are a few things you might want to realize. And the other thing is, looking at the positive 1 and the negative 3 at the end, that's telling you where it's crossing the y-axis right here. So the blue and the black line are both positive 1, and you notice it's going through 1 right there. The last line is negative 3, and if you go, notice it's also going through negative 3 right down there. Look at the future lessons to actually understand how to graph the linear equations with the other formats.